Hey guys, how's it going? Ari 100 here. Um, so we're going to continue with another um, have vulnerable driver topic, which is uninitialized stack variable. Uh, it's been a while since I didn't create any videos uh, because I'm also continuing to learn kernel topics, browser exploitation topics, and it takes a lot of time of mine. But I promised, so I will try to create every single video on the topics that I already covered in the last one and a half years. So uh, here we are. I created some time for myself this weekend so that I can create another YouTube video. Okay, enough of the chit chat. I will jump into the topic directly. I'm planning to publish this blog post today, so it should be available in a bit. But right now, I will go through it from my OneNote notes. So let's see what we have in here. As always, I have the same structure for every single blog post if you're following. Uh, I just talk about the previous blog post and what we've done so far and what we are doing in this one. I'm just going to skip it. I'm assuming you're already going to read it. Just for this one, uh, by skipping the others, with this vulnerability, we are going to control the data in the kernel stack from the user mode um, using an uninitialized stack variable. What does this mean? We're going to see it in a bit. As always, I'm going to start with a source code review. I just like um, put a screenshot here from my um, um, from the GitHub repository. You can just check it out yourself. Uh, we're just going to check the C code. As you know, there's like the header file and the C code file. Um, in the header file, as always, it describes, um, it defines some variables, some data types, um, the same structure for every single vulnerability. So if you've already gone through the previous uh, blog posts or previous topics, this should be familiar to you already. And then uh, in the C code, it shows the vulnerable version versus the secure version and triggers the vulnerability, defines the IOCTL code, the same story. So if we go to the vulnerable part, if we see how, um, how we can trigger the vulnerability, uh, as you can see in the secure version, the uninitialized memory variable is initialized to something. Uh, it's initialized to a value. And in the vulnerable version, it's not initialized, which is the uh, cause of this vulnerability because we will control the data in the kernel stack from the user mode using this uninitialized stack variable. So let's see how we're going to do that. As always, we will first find the OCTL code. After finding this, we will just um, put it in, in our initial exploit that we always use to verify if the OCTL code, code was correct. And after that, we're going to use um, various methods to exploit this vulnerability. So as always, I will start with either pro. If I bring my screens, I have a debugger and debugging machine machines here. I already created a video on how to set up these machines. Um, it should already be working for you if you already follow up the previous video. So I will run my IDA Pro. I will go there and I will load head to vulnerable driver. As always, right now, since I'm not uh, going to get a blue screen or something, I'm just checking the OCTL code there. It's totally okay to load it locally. Cool. Um, okay, let me go back to blog post. I think it's much easier to follow like that. Um, so what I'm doing generally is I'm just going to the functions and um, sorting them out and going to IRP device OCTL handler, choosing the text view, it's much easier to follow for me. I'm going to the uh, beginning of the subroutine and after that, uh, between these dashes, you're seeing the different OCTL handlers for different vulnerabilities defined in this um, vulnerable driver. So we're going to scroll down until we find the uninitialized stack variable. You're seeing some of them that we already covered so far. Some of them we are going to cover in the future. So here we are, uninitialized stack variable. Uh, there's this function um, that we are seeing under um, for this um, stack variable I see my hand handler. What I'm doing generally, uh, there are multiple methods you can do. You can also write a script to find that. But what I'm doing is loading it to IDA, going to the IOC layer handler for this um, vulnerability and then checking the function that's responsible for that and just scrolling up until I see where those arrows lead to. And it's in here. Uh, you can see the function name has the same name here. So if um, that would be in here, we would just say, okay, there's a sub statement, sub AX and this value, and then we have a jump zero. That means the AX has to be this and we would call this as OCTL code. However, there's a sub EAX statement uh, until we reach out to our function. That means we need to revert it, meaning we need to add four points to this value, which makes it um, this one. 
Cool. Um, so we already got that, and we are aware of the function responsible for this IOC layer handler, which is in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my um, just make this minimize. Um, I'm going to go back to my WinDBG. Um, what I'm going to do is I already did these ones sim noisy to make sure that we are seeing. Um, the noisy mode, uh, I already said reload, and if you say LMMH, you're gonna see all the um, module lists. So, have this already here, which means I am connected to this guy. Cool, let's go back here. Um, what's the next move? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a breakpoint at this function, and as, as you see here, that was the um the function name and one in this address is a base address so we are not going to take this one while we are writing the breakpoint we're just going to say um where, where's this breakpoint have the vulnerable driver that's defined already and then the functions address let's put this guy here i already put a breakpoint but i will just put it now um for the sake of the video 0x5718 so that's the breakpoint defined redefined because I already defined it before the video to make sure that it's working. And I'm gonna start it. So debugger is running. Um, okay, we're gonna go back here. So I've already put the stack uninitialize variable code that you are just seeing in my OneNote. That's nothing different, the same code that we used in the last videos over and over again. I just updated the IOCTL code here to make sure that it is working. So as always, I will go to the functions, IRP, device, IOCTL handler, and we'll go to text view, go into the IOCTL handler for this vulnerability, uninitialize stack variable IOCTL handler, handle, I will go there and we'll say graph view. So that's exactly what I put as a screenshot here. So let's see what's happening in that case. Um, so we are um, we see our user buffer in ECX, and there's a test ECX ECX statement, and then there's a jump zero. Oops, the other guy is like come back. Um, so there's a jump zero statement. If you fail the jump zero statement, we will follow the red line, meaning that we will trigger the vulnerability with this trigger uninitialized stack variable function or code. Um, so if you double click on this one, it's because we want to see the details of this vulnerability. So let's see what's going on. So as you can see, there's this call properate of properate, um, and then uh, we will load a magic value here, which is this BAD zero B something. Uh, and we're putting this in the AX register, and after that, there's a comparison between AX and ESI, which is holding our um, user provided buffer. So we're comparing this, and there's a jump not zero statement. So after the comparison between this magic value and our user provided value, um, when the jump not zero statement fails, it goes to the red line, right? Um, and when this happens, we are putting two variables onto the stack when you see this, uh, the brackets. Uh, we're moving EAX into, uh, the, onto the stack, and we know that EAX holds this magic value, and we are putting offset uninitialized stack variable object callback onto stack as well. So, um, if you right-click on uninitialized stack variable, um, it is this value in hex and this is basically the address of the callback function uh, 86670 um, so we will put these two variables onto the stack and again if we take the second path um, so after a bunch of um, statements here um, we're gonna have a comparison again before the jump zero um, it's basically comparing EDI uh, with this EBP plus something, and if you remember, this EBP plus var something was offs offset to uninitialized stack variable callback, right? So, if we uh, end up with jump zero, um, then we are gonna go there with this call EBP something, and we're gonna jump to this um, this function, which is trigger uninitialized stack variable. Um, and it's the end of it. So meaning, we want to end up in here if you want to trigger the vulnerability. And meaningfully, if we can put our shell code in wherever this um, address is, EBP plus var something, um, we can basically achieve an RCE. 
And if you want to see the value for var um, underscore 108, if you go a bit back in the beginning of this function, this is already defined with minus um, 108 hex. So um, we know what this means then. And if we put it EBP minus 108H, um, well, if we put our shellcode there, uh, we will achieve our goal, right? All right, after that, we're gonna do kernel stack spring and we're gonna use this function. Um, this is the equivalent of the fighting code, but we're gonna see it very quickly on the Windows debugger. Um, so this, um, so I updated the initial script a bit. The only thing I added is we're gonna do the spring here. Uh, I added um, maximal 1, uh, 1024 A characters, and then we're gonna write something different than magical value that we've seen in the IDA before. And I'm just gonna use this syntax for the ntmap user physical pages uh, function. Um, if you go back to here, it will show you, um, um, if you go to the API call uh, page, you can see which values it's taken and the rest is the same. So what happens is that I'm gonna put a breakpoint. Let's check the breakpoints first because I was working in the background with BL. Um, okay, let me clear this one. But we're gonna have this breakpoint that's ntmap user physical pages um, function. So let's see how it works out. I will say G and I will go to the debuggy. As you can see, we hit the breakpoint. And then we check the thread one more time. We're seeing this time winter to do thread instead of um, fight and exit as we seen last time. Uh, we're gonna grab the stack in its uh, address in here. Um, and you can also follow the tutorial that I mentioned here with uh, uninitialized stack variable callback address and checking out the offset so that we can verify later if we sprayed all these values in here. Uh, I'm just gonna show it in action quickly to make sure that um, the video is not for hours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue. And this time I'm gonna send the following um, final script. So that's the final script. Let's see what did we add to that. Um, we are just opening the um, comment prompt. So that's the little um, fighting script that I showed in the blog post again, how to spray this. Um, so let me go back here to the um, explanation. I think it's much easier. As always, the imports, the DLL, so that we can call them. Uh, create file API here, um, so we can create the handle. After that, the shellcode, nothing different. That That's like the sh same shellcode that we used in the previous uh, videos. Um, have to defeat dep again the same lines nothing different we're just gonna bypass dep with virtual alloc uh, we will create the um, rwx memory and we will copy our shellcode to that region um, using these few lines of code nothing different that's why i'm ex i'm not explaining again um, so in here in these few lines of code we're just using ntmap user physical pages um, call as we already tried in the u2 um, py um, um, script that I showed you before, nothing different. Uh, we're just basically using this one liner here um, to have the right format. And again, like I mentioned, the buffer variable should be something different than the magical value. So let's see it in action. If we are getting a shell like that, I'm just going to send it like this. We are having debugger, but we don't have to. Um, I'm just showing you we hit the breakpoint for this call. Um, when I say G, continue, we got a new um, command prompt open. If I ask who am I, this entered the system. And if I check for the previous one, that was a um, low privilege user. So there we go. Um, we got the shell. Of course, in the blog post, there are much more details than what we've seen in the video. I just tried to walk you guys through some of this stuff. Uh, but there are more deep concepts that you need to understand. Um, so I suggest you to check all the blog posts that are out there as I've already done the same. Um, the video is not to explain everything 100% um, because if we go to deep concepts, it's gonna take probably hours and um, there are experts out there that explains it much better than I do. 
That's why I also read the API call documentations, the other people's blog posts, and everything else out there um, in order to create these videos and try to understand the concepts. So if anything is missing, uh, just drop a comment or check the blog post first. Maybe they, you can already find the answer in there. So cheers, guys.